Well, good evening. Um, I hope this re does reach you um, for evening prayer at the moment. And this is a first, Facebook is down. So I cannot get onto Facebook to do evening prayer. So I am recording in the hope that I can upload this when whatever the issue is sorted. So I hope you've had a good day. I'm just going to light my candle. And I thought this evening I would do a Celtic uh, evening prayer. Uh, this is because I was given this book and I thought, well, use it this evening. So, and it was given by Carol, actually. So thank you, Carol. I'm going to share screen so that you're able to join in with me. Just hold a moment's silence as we still our hearts and come into God's presence. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's say the opening sentences together. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Out of depths I have cried to you, O Lord, hear my voice. With my whole heart I want to praise you, O Lord, hear my voice. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand, who could stand? I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word do I hope. So then we come to expressions of faith, which I invite you to join in with me. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day, and though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened the darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe, and though you be silent now, today I believe. And so we come to the psalm for today, which is Psalm 85. I'm going to read verses 1 to 13. You, Lord, showed favour to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Saviour, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger up through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our, 
and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So we come to the scripture reading for today. And I'm going to read from Acts chapter verses 26. It suggests verses 1 to 32, but that's rather a lot. So I'm going to read from 1 to 19. But I encourage you to maybe get your Bible out after and read the rest. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider my fortune that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am to make my defence today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I belong to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope and the promise made by God to our ancestors. A promise that our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem, with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blasphemy. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests, when at midday along the road, your excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but get up and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to all those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Act 26 tells of Paul's testimony no one knows who, if anyone, came to know Jesus that day, but Paul's testimony is important. He was preaching truth to kings and governors, just as Jesus said he would. He was also on his way to Rome to see Caesar, just as Jesus said. Acts tells us that God's promises are true and trustworthy. What does this mean for us? It is our job as Christians to tell other people the facts about Jesus how he's changed our lives and how the Holy Spirit works in our life now. But it is God's job to work in the hearts of people to choose him. We merely present the facts. We merely attempt to persuade like Paul, but we must remember it's God that's the one who changes hearts. Amen. So following the Celtic evening prayer, there's a meditation for today. So feel free to close your eyes 
make yourself comfortable and soak in the words of the meditation, which is a prayer of abandonment to God. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you do, I will thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me as it is in all your creatures. And I'll ask nothing else, my Lord. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. I give it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord. I so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands with a trust beyond all measure, because you are my father. So we come to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, in October we delight in the rich colours of autumn that startle the senses with their bold extravagance. May we never cease to marvel at nature's palette or be dazzled by every burning bush that speaks of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In October, we enjoy the last fruits of the earth's generosity this year. May we turn, may we in turn be generous in our care for this good earth and make it our concern that every species of bird, animal, tree and plant survives and flourishes in its own way. We pray for all the organizations and individuals committed to conservation and care of the environment. May we be among those committed to the environment and demonstrate our determination not to harm the world as we journey through it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In October, with summer gone, we turn our minds to the hard realities that never went away. Those of politics and finance, global security and international peace. We pray for all those called to high and heavy responsibility in national life. We especially pray for the government as they tackle supply issues and as they manage international travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in October, holidays seem a long time ago and Christmas far away. We pray for the life of the church through these weeks, that we may each contribute to the church's life in the best way we can, and that our life together may be attractive and Christ-centred, enabling us to live fully in your world, in your way, with your help. Especially we pray for plans that are coming together for the remembrance services, as well as those for Christmas. And we especially pray for the preparations of dear Elizabeth's funeral. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for some in October, hearts are heavy and heads hang down. Encourage those who are facing hard times, difficult decisions, problematic relationships or uncertain health. Touch their lives with hope and assure them nothing can separate them from your love. We especially pray for those struggling with their faith right now. We pray for Derek and the rest of Elizabeth's family as they mourn their loss. We pray for Rennie. We pray for all who are fighting cancer or other health conditions such as heart problems. We pray for all who are fighting mental health issues. We pray for those who at this time are remembering the loss of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of October, Lord of the year, lead us through this month with faith, hope and love. Amen.
and we come to the canticle which I invite you to join in. In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, to dwell in the presence of my God, to gaze on your holy place. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. I wait for the Lord. Have courage and wait. Wait for the Lord. And the blessing. See that ye be at peace among yourselves, my children, and love one another. Follow the example of good men of old, and God will comfort you and help you, both in this world and in the world which is to come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That brings us to the end of evening prayer this evening. I hope that you have a peaceful evening and I pray that I am able to get this somehow onto Facebook so that you can join me. God bless. <laughs>